Today's lesson is 5.4, conditional probability, and that's on pages 344 to 353. Our curriculum outcome is to extend understanding of odds and probability. And our lesson objectives is to learn what is meant by the phrases conditional probability and dependent events, and to learn how to solve conditional probability questions. So dependent events are events whose outcomes are affected by each other. So for example, if you're pulling a card from a deck after another card has already been pulled, that changes your probability. The second card's probability is dependent on the first card's probability. Um, if you're pulling a marble from a bag and not replacing it before pulling another, again, those probabilities affect each other. So those are dependent events. Conditional probability is the probability that an event will occur if another event has already occurred. So an example here, probability of pulling an ace out of a deck if you know the card is red. That changes the, uh, what you know about the probability. And the second one, there should be a little dash here. In Texas Hold'em, the probability that your opponent has a club if there are already three clubs showing on the table, that is conditional probability. So the equation that we use for conditional probability is this. It says probability of B line A. So that means the probability of B if, this line means if, we already know A's occurred. Okay, so the probability of B happening if A's already occurred is the probability of A and B both happening. Remember, that's an and. And uh, divided by the probability of just A occurring. So let's use this as an example. It says, what is the probability that if you wrote all the numbers from 1 to 40 on slips of paper and drew one of them out, that it would be a number divisible by 4 if you already knew it was divisible by 6? So we're going to write this down as probability. I'm just going to use 4 as divisible by 4 if we already know that it's divisible by 6 is going to be equal to probability of it being divisible by 4 and divisible by 6 divided by the probability that it is just divisible by 6. So remember that we're always going to be dividing by the second part of this thing. So first I guess it would be nice to know what we call our sample size or our sample set, sorry. Um, so if we write down all the numbers divisible by 4 from uh, 1 to 40, we have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Uh, did I miss any? Nope, we're good. Um, 24, 28, 32, 36, and 40. So we actually have 8 out of 40 numbers. And all the numbers that are divisible by 6, we have 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36. So let's start figuring out these probabilities. We know this is going to be out of 40 because there's 40 numbers. So the probability that we are going to have a number that's divisible by 4 and 6 would be any of these numbers that appear on both lists. So we have 12 and we have 36. So that's just 2 out of 40. And we're going to divide that by the probability of it only being a 6 and that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 out of 40. And when we take a fraction we divide by a fraction that means we have 2 over 40 multiplied by 40 over 6 and we have a 2 in 6 chance or a 1 in 3 chance. So that should make sense because if we already know that it's divisible by 6 that means that there's 6 things here and if we're looking for it also being divisible by 4 that means there's only 2 out of these 6 things and so we get a 2 divided by 6. It's just that sometimes this equation might help us with some more of the more complicated questions. So if studies show that 91% of Americans owned a cell phone and 42% of these people have a smartphone, what is the probability that if you met a random American on the street that he or she has a smartphone? So let's try and figure out exactly what these numbers meant that they gave us. We know that 91% of Americans owned a cell phone. So the probability of someone having a cell phone is 0.91. Now, 42% of those people, sorry, have a smartphone. So that's the probability that someone has a smartphone if we already know that they have a cell phone. That's 0 0.42. And what we're trying to find out is that if we met somebody on the street that he or she has a smartphone. So the probability that person has a smartphone which is and a cell phone at the same time. We don't know that. So if we use our equation, probability of a smartphone if we know that it's a cell phone, that's going to be the probability of a smartphone and a cell phone divided by the probability of just a cell phone. So we get 0 0.42 equaling probability of cell phone and smartphone over just probability of a cell phone is 0 0.91. So to solve for this, we just take 0 
and multiply it by 0 0.91. And we end up with 38% chance that that person has a smartphone, just knowing that they have a cell phone in their pocket. So the second part of this question says, what is the probability that the person would have a cell phone but not a smartphone? So now we're looking for the probability that it's not a smartphone but a cell phone. And so that changes it up just a little bit and because we're going to write out our equation. So the probability of a smart, not a smartphone if we know that it's already a cell phone is equal to the probability of a smartphone and, no, sorry, not a smartphone and a cell phone and the probability of it being a cell phone. So the probability of it being a cell phone is still 91%. But this other number changes just a little bit because the probability of not being a smartphone would be 58% because 42% of it says that it is a smartphone. So we got 0.58 here. So in this case, when we multiply 0 0.91 by 0 0.58, that means a 53% chance that person has a cell phone in their pocket, but it's not a smartphone. Our final example says, if you had three red balls, four yellow balls, and two green balls in a bag, and remove two of the balls without replacing the first ball that you removed, find A, the probability that you pull out two yellow balls, and B, the probability that you pull out a red ball if the first ball you pulled out was green. So part A first. We're going to find the probability of pulling out a yellow ball and then another yellow ball. So the probability of a yellow and then another yellow. And that is just the probability of pulling out a yellow ball first, so that's 4 out of 9, multiplied by the probability of pulling out a second yellow ball. Well, there's only 3 yellow balls left inside there, and there's also only 8 balls altogether left in there. So we end up with 12 over 72 which is a 16.7% chance that you could pull out a yellow ball and then another yellow ball. Part B seems like it might be a little more complicated than it actually is. The probability that you pull out a red ball if the first ball that you pulled out was green. So if we pulled out a ball and it was green, that means that there's still four yellow balls in there, but we know that there's one less, oh sorry, a red ball. So there's three red balls back in there. And we know that there's one less ball inside the bag, so that's just three out of eight. So your final probability there would be 37.5%. So in summary, dependent events are events whose outcomes are affected by each other, like that last example when you pull out a ball and you don't replace it. That means the probability of pulling out another ball is now affected. And conditional probability is the probability that an event will occur if another event has already occurred. So the keyword there is if. And this says the probability of an event B occurring if A has already occurred is the probability of both event A and B occurring just divided by the probability that event A has occurred. And so your assignment is on pages 350 to 353. Uh, good luck and we'll see you in class.